Hello everyone. Today we are going to show you how to get started with DB2 on AWS in just 10 minutes. So to begin, first we have to go to AWS Marketplace website. Now this website has a lot of services listed there, but what we are going to look for is DB2. So we type in DB2 in the search bar and we hit enter. Now the catalog shows a lot of services, but what we are going to use is IBM DB2, which means the service is published by IBM and we can also validate the version. This version of IBM DB2 11.1.4.4 is the latest as of today, April 20th. We move ahead in the journey for our step one by continuing to subscribe to the service. Here we have to accept the terms and conditions to use this software. It takes a couple of minutes, but it gets done really quickly. Once the terms have been accepted, we are ready to move to the step two, which is configuration. The initial configuration is basically about using which Amazon image, the version of the software, and the region. For the purposes of this demo, we are going to leave these as default since they are correct. For the next step, I click on continue to launch. Now here, I get a set of instructions that I'm going to look at and store in my notepad because these will be useful when we actually have the instance provision on AWS to test out our services. So I pick out notepad, I open a new tab for it, and I copy paste the instructions that are listed. The formatting is not that great, but maybe it works better with the tool like Sublime Text. Anyways, getting back to the provisioning screen again, we see a bunch of parameters there. The parameters that are required to set up our instance. Most of them are pre-populated with default values, which are pretty good and can be used to provision our instance. So I'm going to leave them as they are and just go through the required parameters. Security group is set up as well. However, the one that you would need to define and configure is the key pair. Now the key pair is required so that it can generate a public and a private key that you will store on your laptop so you can connect with using it later on. You click on create private key, give it a sensible name, and there we go. It has created the public and it's asking me to store the private key on my laptop. I go, I create a folder on my machine, I give it a sensible name, just like uh, DB2 on AWS, and then I click Save. Once the key is stored, now I have the private key stored on my machine, which I will use on a later stage to connect to this instance. I go back to the configuration screen, select the key pair now that I just created, and I click on Launch. As soon as I click on Launch, AWS tells me that congratulations, my instance is being deployed, and I can look at it using the EC2 console. Now for any AWS user, EC2 console is a pretty standard practice which tells you status about your services. Once we go there, we see that the instance is being provisioned. Right now it's pending. The status checks are initializing, so our service is being provisioned yet not ready. On this page, you also get a lot of information about your service and the provisioning of your instance. Like you can check the AMI ID, which shows which exact Amazon image is provisioning, other related information to your service. One of the important ones to note here is your public DNS. So this is the public IP that you would be using in later stage to actually connect to this instance. So our instance is now running. However, the status checks are still being done. So while we have a couple of seconds, we can either check more information or we can actually go to the connect tab and learn how to actually connect to our instance on AWS. The four steps listed out here are pretty helpful and we'll be using these steps to actually connect to the DB2 instance using my machine. Step one is to actually go to the terminal and after going to the terminal, we locate my DB2 private key. The DB2 private key is stored in the documents folder under DB2 AWS. We reach there. Now I can see the db2.pem key here. I start typing the SSH command that was shown in the connect tab that we saw in the EC2 console screen. I start typing by SSH command, specifying the db2.pem key with the user 
at the public IP address for this instance. Now, if you look carefully, I'm using the EC2 dash user as a user to connect to this instance because that's the most recommended uh, user that Amazon suggests to connect to this instance. I type in the IP address and I click enter. So what I see here is an operation timeout. And the reason for that is because the firewall rules that are set up on the EC2 instance are pretty restrictive because of the security reasons. So what I have to do is ensure that it allows my laptop to connect to it. And for that, we need to change the firewall rules. So for that, we go to the EC2 console, locate the network and security settings, specifically the security groups, and edit the firewall rules here to allow my machine to connect to that instance. We go into the inbound rules because the connection is being inbound to that instance, and we click on edit. Once we click on edit, we see the source is selected as custom. We need to change it to my IP address. Now, the cool thing about this is when I specify my IP address, it automatically populates it with my current IP address. So I don't have to go and spend my time looking for my IP address. I give it a proper name and I click on save. So the name is now saved. Going back to my terminal now, I'm gonna try the same command again and voila. This time it's allowing me to connect to that instance. But hey, again, there's an issue. This time it's saying the private key that I have on my laptop is not secured. What that means is that the key permissions on my laptop are not up to the extent that are required by the instance. So I'm gonna show you the current permissions by typing this command and what we see is the permissions are currently 666 read write read write read write i'm going to change these to 700 by typing the gmart command which will change the permissions to read write and execute just for the user which is me and nothing for group or the world now after doing this level of security i'm going to try again the command to connect to the instance and as you see I'm good to go. Going back to the instructions that we copy pasted earlier while provisioning our instance, we see what are the next steps. So a couple of next steps include changing the password for db2 inst1 user as a root user. Following that, it tells that we have a sample database already available for our convenience. So we can list that database to see if our instance is working properly. We can try to access that database by running a couple of SQL commands. And then it talks about how to create and insert a new table, query that table for our testing. Going back to the terminal to proceed with these steps, we would change to the root user by typing in sudo su. And as a root user, we will try to change the password for db2 inst1 user. I type in the new password. And then I have to retype the new password for security reasons. Oh. My typo, let me try again. And hopefully this time it works. Good. So we have successfully updated the password for db one Now let's try to change uh, to that user, again a typo, so db ins one let's clear the screen, sudo su dash db2 inst1, and here we go. Now we are changed to db2 inst1 user on our db2 on AWS instance. The next step is to list the databases available, and we should see a sample database exactly like this, which was already mentioned in our instructions when we copy paste it. The next step is to connect to that database. And from here, you can run your SQL commands that you want to. This concludes our setting up DB2 on AWS in just 10 minutes video. Thank you for watching. This video was brought to you by IBM DB2 Offering Management Team.